And the reason that we had inflation in Sri Lanka was there was excess amount of money chasing too few goods because the central bank went on monetary financing. You see, there's a difference between money printing and credit creation. Credit creation happens when banks lend money. There's the moment banks make a loan, it becomes a deposit in somebody's bank account. And that's how money supply, which is an aggregate of all bank deposits and currency in circulation, goes up. The difference is that when you make a loan, there is a market-based interest rate attached to that. So the issue with Sri Lanka, and I'll come back to that, why these crises keep happening is we don't have a market economy in Sri Lanka. In a market economy, the essential things is that scarce resources should be reflected, the scarcity value should be reflected by prices, and the difference between different goods and services should be maintained by relative prices. So for example, the cost of money is the interest rate, the cost of your exchange rate is relative to another exchange rate, that's a relative price. All of these things should be market determined. So now what happened in Sri Lanka is that we, we run a state that is both derages, where the government is poking its fingers, where the market uh, should operate. The best example is trying to put flow prices on hotel rooms in the city of Colombo, which is a very, very silly idea. <laughs> And the other thing is this penchant of otaki, what is called otaki, that we can be self-sufficient. We have tried this number of times and it has been diabolical failures. Now why inflation happened in Sri Lanka was there are enormous amount of money printing and the scarcity value of imported commodities were not reflected by their scarcity value because you tried to fix the exchange rate. So you made imported goods artificially cheap. You did not price energy at what it should be with the necessary taxation. You sold electricity below its cost price for something like 10 years. These are very, very large parts. About 18 to 19% of your import bill is coming through energy, all forms of energy. So when you have these imbalances, that created too much money chasing too few goods. And unfortunately, I don't have my chart deck, but I can show you that in the years 2020, 2021, demand was off the chart. Even though we were having power cuts, if you look at electricity consumption, fuel crisis, it was way, way above even 2018, which was the most normal. So that is what caused inflation. Now, our assertion that there is a contraction in demand and there is too many more goods is correct because basically people can't afford. But that is the rebalancing situation that that is within the grounds of people's affordability and some of it was due to supply chain shocks. Hmm. So take for example the exchange rate. When the official exchange rate was say 360 and 370 because there wasn't sufficient available in the market and they were using the informal channels, many people were pricing their products at 450 rupees as the exchange rate. All that got fed into prices.